Welcome to episode 26 of Live It Out with the Planning Woman. I'm your host, Jennifer Booth, founder of The Planning Woman and creator of The Planning Woman's 30-Day Scripture Journals. I'm also a time management consultant and a certified life purpose coach. I'm so glad you could join me today for this episode. It is my hope that you will be encouraged by what you hear to be able to live a life of real purpose with a real plan that helps you to experience real peace. I can't believe we are on episode 26. Where has the time gone? I have had such a great time over these last few months coming up with topics that I hope you have found to be helpful. I'm looking forward to 2019 when I hope to be able to have some episodes where I interview other people who can give us insight on what it means to live out our purpose and how we can do that um, with a real plan and experience real peace while doing it. I also can't believe Christmas is just a few days away. I always look forward to the celebration of Christmas, but for some reason, I'm really behind on all I need to do this year. I haven't had a really good plan for this Christmas season, and I'm paying for it now with last minute rushing to the store in search of gifts or foods for our Christmas meal. None of this has dampened my spirit, though. I'm just putting my head down, trying to get everything done while enjoying the sights and sounds of Christmas. One thing I have been reminded of this season is the importance of preparing. I have been lax on planning and preparing in lots of areas of my life lately, and I want to change that in 2019, so I am committed to do a better job of planning. After all, I am the planning woman, right? So I should be able to do this, and I do not know why... um, Things have been harder for me right now because I really am at a good place where I can do lots of new things and be excited about them. So um, I'm hoping to harness all of that enthusiasm and energy into um, doing a better job of planning in 2019. I've also been reminded this season that it's important to celebrate life every day, both the big moments and the small ones. Life is hard, though. It's challenging, demanding, and it can be exhausting. However, life can also be joyful, carefree, and spontaneous. It's no wonder, though, that with all the difficulties and pressures of life, we often overlook the little moments in life that we can celebrate. I don't know about you, but I tend to reserve celebrations for big things like birthdays, weddings, new babies, and holidays. I've come to the conclusion lately, though, that if we only celebrate the big events in life, we are missing out on a lot of good times and blessings. I've come to uh, realize over the years that there are um, different situations that have made me come to this conclusion that we need to celebrate everything in life. And I want to share these um well, three situations that have led me to this conclusion. And um, I'll walk you through those situations and then share what they have in common and how they have formed my opinion of how we should celebrate life every day, no matter the circumstance. The first situation deals with my good friend and pastor's wife um, who fought a battle with breast cancer a couple of years ago. And while she has beaten the cancer, It was still a serious situation that she had to walk through, and it was a hard time with treatments and, you know, losing her hair and discouragement and feeling bad, but she was a trooper and made it through. And as is to be expected during that time, her family and friends rallied support around her, pledging to pray and encourage her throughout her journey in battling cancer. The second situation I've had is when um, I had someone share with me that her parents have been savers all of their married years. They were saving up to be able to afford a comfortable lifestyle when they retired, and they had plans to travel and to enjoy life while they were still young enough and able to be on the go. Now that her father has retired, and I think he retired at a fairly young age, Um, He has become content to stay home and basically do nothing but watch TV or tend to chores around the house. 
He's in great health, but due to his inactivity, he is finding it hard to get around. All those years of saving up for an active retirement seem to be wasted. And the third situation I want to share is about birthdays, specifically Facebook birthdays. And I really love celebrating um, birthdays on Facebook because you get to hear from people from all over the world that you're friends with. If you have friends around the world, I happen to have a few in other countries. Um, But you get to hear from people from all over, from different areas of your life, um, when they wish you a happy birthday. But one friend of mine remarked that after receiving hundreds of birthday greetings, that she wished words of encouragement and memories of happy times would not be left just to birthdays. She said she would love it if people would encourage each other daily without any special occasion involved. So what do these three situations have in common? In my mind, they all involve waiting for an occasion to celebrate. While my friend who had breast cancer had great support, where was the support the day before she found out she had cancer? Why do we wait until someone has a serious illness to offer support and encouragement or celebrate their life? Isn't life hard enough to warrant encouragement every day? For my friend's parents, who were not taking advantage of their retirement, they put off doing things and sacrificed time and money only to see it go to waste because of their choices. Why not take advantage of your retirement years? What better time to celebrate? And the same could be said for my friend and her wish for encouragement on a daily basis. Wouldn't life be so much more joyful if we celebrated the small things and encouraged others along the way? It's kind of like reserving the good dishes for when you have company over. Why can't we pull them out on a Tuesday night and eat tacos on them? What's wrong with celebrating your family just because? I propose we take a step back from our busy lives and see how we can celebrate the small things in our lives. I would guess that if we were more intentional about celebrating and becoming an encourager, our life would be filled with so much joy. Our perspectives could change, and what used to seem impossible could become impossible. Are you with me on this? Can you relate? I was recently reminded that December 30th is the anniversary of my first date with my husband. This year will mark 23 years since that first date. We used to be really good about celebrating that date. We don't exchange gifts, but we have gone out to dinner many times to celebrate. But we haven't done that in a few years due to the busyness of our lives. So I plan on us celebrating this year, if at all possible. After all, it is a celebration of the beginning of our lives together. We just didn't know it at the time when we went out. And I think it's important to remember things like that. Some people might say that is a big event, but um, sometimes you can overlook special dates and special moments that really need to be celebrated year after year. I also think we celebrate life when we give encouragement to or help other people who are in need. We don't have to have an occasion to celebrate. We can just celebrate the fact that God has given us another day to live, and He has also given us what we need. What more reason do we need to celebrate life? So how about you? What ways do you celebrate life every day? Let me share a few ideas I've come up with that I want to implement in my own life. Maybe you'll find a few that will interest you as well. Get out the good dishes. Like I said earlier, um, don't wait for that special occasion. Celebrate your family just because. Make that phone call to a loved one you've not spoken with in a long time. Text a friend an encouraging message. If you're really adventurous, you could send a handwritten note of encouragement to someone. Personally, I like to make my own cards that are unique to the person I'm sending them to, but you don't have to be crafty to do this. You can buy pre-made cards or even just a simple note uh, from a notepad 
to someone could brighten their day. Call up a friend and see how her day is going. Then listen, and don't be in a hurry to share your thoughts and opinions. Surprise your husband with something he likes, a special meal, time alone, or a simple token of your affection will show him you care. If you don't normally have dessert at home, make a special treat to surprise your family. Spend one-on-one time with your kids. Listen, don't lecture or give advice. Sometimes they just want to be heard. Create a journal to communicate with your kids. I made a journal for my daughter and me several years ago when she was in elementary school leading up to going into middle school, where we could write to each other and share our thoughts. And that journal helped her to express some things to me that she may not have felt comfortable sharing in person. It really helped to keep the lines of communication open between us during that time, and it helped us to celebrate the successes she had, even if they weren't what most people would consider big ones. But it was such a great tool Um, to deepen our relationship together and to give her a safe place to share things that were going on in her life that she wanted to talk to me about. And my final tip is to practice random acts of kindness. Um, One way you can do that is to pay for the next person's order in line behind you. I've heard about that so many times of how one person does that. And then when the person gets up there to pay for theirs and realize it's been taken care of, they decide to pay for the next person behind them and so on and so on. And um, I think just doing any kind of random act of kindness can trigger um, more acts of kindness in other people as well. So we never know when we're going to start a movement of kindness or encouragement just by our one act. These are just a few ideas that I've thought of. I'm sure there are many other ways that we could celebrate life every day. And I don't know about you, but I want to spend 2019 in celebration mode. This last year has not been um, a super easy year for me. And while we've had some celebrations, we've had a lot of um, hard seasons to walk through. And so I'm looking forward to a more positive year in 2019. I've let a lot of great opportunities pass me by to celebrate life, and I don't want that to be the case this year. I'd love to hear how you celebrate life. Would you do me a favor and drop me an email at theplanningwoman at gmail.com and let me know how you celebrate life? I'd also love to connect with you on Facebook at facebook.com slash theplanningwoman or on Instagram at instagram.com slash theplanningwoman. This is the last episode of 2018. Next week, if you tune in, you'll hear a replay of a previous episode. I'm so excited to share new things with you in 2019. I hope you'll share this podcast with your friends and family so they can tune in each week to get encouragement for their lives. I'd also like to thank those of you who tune in week after week. I'm so humbled that you would take the time to listen to what I have to say I'd love it if you'd share topics you would like to hear more about in 2019. So you can email me your thoughts at theplanningwoman at gmail.com. I want to do shows that will be encouraging to you. So until 2019, I hope you have a very, very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.